Yeah, that's right. I, would, I learned about that. That was the first crew assignments out of that third group at that right. time. I was on a flight from Houston to L.A. with Al Shepard when Al Shepard told me that I was going to work with Pete on backing up Gemini 8. So that's how I started. So we backed up 8, rotated to Gemini 11, came off of there, backed up Apollo 9, we flew 12. I stayed in Apollo and backed up 15, and you went off to Skylab. Wait, you're going to have two guys on the switch here. The old surveyor. <laughs> Do you see you're tearing the house apart? Yeah. Oh, the one thing, I don't know if you want this, but I mean, there's a, there's a great story about the guy with the, were you both on that carrier at the same time? You were telling me about that, um, the most unlucky guy in the Navy who crashed into... Uh, John R.C. Mitchell. Were, was, were no, we, neither one of us were on the on the ship, when, on his ship when that happened to him. You, know, you remember John mm -hmm. R.C. The, the, you're talking about he uh, he hit the... He, he didn't hit the round down. He hit the oh, back yeah. of the boat. I mean, okay. flat into the back of the and boat. The and, and in the old days, the, the, those uh, older carriers had a lower outside deck on the stern that had two gun tubs mm -hmm. for, uh, I don't know, 40 millimeter machine guns or 5 inch 38 uh, yeah. anti aircraft guns, whatever. And so this Banshee, which was a straight wing airplane, came in and and the wings hit the two gun tubs and and slowed it up just enough so when the nose crumpled into the into the stern why the the, the it did kill him and and also the airplane broke in half from the back and just fell in the water and and he wound up in this big pile of junk <laughs> this is at night okay yeah. it's pitch black and uh and so Everybody assumed when they saw this big fireball and Bumo and no airplane and stuff splashed in the water that that was the end of a good old J.R.C. Mitchell. And, uh, and so he's down there shaking his head in the wreckage and he finally, it's pitch black, he finally climbs out of this, what's left of it, and he finds one of the watertight doors and he got undogged the hatches and Get 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 through this hatch, and now he's in the completely pitch black hangar deck, and it's back where they got all the Liberty launches, and they're all tied down with cables, and poor guys falling over cables, and, and tie downs, and tripping, and he finally finds a phone, and he dials his ready room, you know, and so whoever the guy <laughs> is in the ready room is his turns out is one of. Because whites again. <laughs> I wonder if Paul has seen this recently. <laughs> It'd be funny. You know, who was it sent us the uh, videotape, you know? Do you have a videotape? I think so. Yeah. Because I've, the, got, yeah. I've got two copies. I don't know what uh, happened to my film. 16 millimeter. You do? Yeah, I got the one of the originals, and then Al Bean, he went and did some cutting. There's some, there's some stuff out of this that's missing. Probably insignificant, but he went and he went and Al went and edited it, and they did the second, uh, second film. Uh, the uh, television camera. Well, I go back to Apollo 11. Uh, that was a black and white television camera. And they tried to rush through and get us the first color television camera. Uh, and it was the old system, you know, it was a camera that had a color wheel in it. And and for all our training, all we had was a block of wood. And I think this camera showed up like uh, three days before the flight. And, and Al and I never laid eyes on it. I, all we ever saw was the was the training block of wood. And uh, it was installed in the lamb, and, and anyhow, make long story short, he was to set it up on this tripod, 
And one of the first things he was to do